Hello and welcome to the DC United Kingdom podcast. This is season three and it's episode five. And I'm your host, James Graham. Um, you'll see alongside me making its second appearance. If you've not seen it before, go and check out season two, episode seven, um, because that was when he made his debut. It is Barney and he does the UK NYCFC account. How are you doing? Very good, James. Thanks for having me again. Good to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you on. It's always nice to get some British people on to a British <laughs> MLS podcast. I love hearing... It. Not Nothing against you guys out there who are from America. I love your accent and I love you. But it's always nice just to hear a fellow Brit talking and having that British accent. And I'm sure you guys enjoy it as well. Um, just to give a bit of a background to you, Barney, um, and to why you're on today. If you, like I said, if you haven't already guessed, he runs the UK NYCFC camp. But Give us that little bit of a background as to, one, how long you've been doing it, but two, why New York City FC? Yeah, so um, back in the kind of uh, mid-2010s, I was going through a good few years of becoming a bit of a night owl. Um, being a football addict as I am, naturally stumbled across MLS uh, back in the early days of Sky picking it up. Um, that was around the time there was rumours of this kind of Man City Yankees combination thing going to happen, and Frank Lampard and David Villa getting drafted, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so, kind of just tick the right boxes, right time. Yeah. I was already paying some loose attention to MLS. Um, my brother-in-law is an enormous Man City fan, being from Manchester. Naturally, he sports the blue half. Um, so, and until until I moved to Portsmouth, I'd never seen a Premier League game other than a Man City game because of him. So, um, you know, that's my tedious link to why mm. New York City. But uh, I, I kind of, I'd always, before New York City became a formal thing, I decided that I wanted a team, but I wanted it to, there, to be a link. Yeah. So, you know, I guess had I waited a little while longer or known the link, I might have chosen Colorado because growing up, I was a big Arsenal fan. Um, so the link with uh, Stan Kronk here, if that's his name, um, would have made a little bit of sense as well, perhaps. Yeah. But um, the, there doesn't seem to be much of a link there other than the owner. They've ne- they've had that preseason friendly like a year or two ago. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's yeah. that's why New York City timing and um, a, a small tedious family link. <laughs> yeah, why not? I think that's how a lot of us over here in the UK when we're supporting a team from an, well, not just MLS, but another country, we have to have that tedious link to that particular team. Uh, as you guys know, out there, my tedious link to DC United is Jaime Moreno. The fact that he, he spent one season at the Borough, that was my team <laughs> over here, then moved to, <laughs> moved over, and then that was it. It was done. I mean, granted, I was only eight at the time when I moved to DC, but it kind of stuck with Enough. me. And it's, it's one of those things where you, I always remember when that move happened, I was like, Oh, America plays football. <laughs> and that was it. It was, I mean, obviously they had the World Cup in 1994, but it still, it just didn't dawn on me that America had football or soccer, yeah. as you guys call it. Um, so, yeah, so that was my tedious link to it anyway. Um, but the reason why you're on today is because our first game of the season is against you guys at home to at Audi Field, where recently it's been announced that it's gone from 20% fans to 25% fans. So it's it's looking good. I know quite a few guys who've uh, just recently got their tickets for the game. So it's all looking good, and it looks like it will be a sellout of sorts, even though it's not going to be the 20,000 sure. that are going to be there. Um, so let's talk about, obviously, NYCFC and the 2021 season. Now, this is, I know this is the first question for you, Barney, but it's going to be a sore one. Um, where's home? Because uh, uh, where is uh, home for NY? Is it New York City or is it New Jersey? Um, as, as some fans, yeah, they've, you know, edited their, their <laughs> Twitter handles, statuses to NY slash NJ, uh, CFC or whatever. Um uh, funnily enough, I was actually looking on the Wikipedia page for the mm. summary of our 2020 season, and clearly some funny Red Bull fans have been on there, and because it says uh, 2020 home stadium Red Bull Arena, <laughs> <laughs> brilliant! Yeah, we played like three, four games. No, not even that. Two games there, whatever it was. I don't even know. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, home is going to be all over the shop this year, it mm. seems. Um, Two thirds ish of the games at Yankee Stadium and like eight games, I want to say, at Red Bull Arena. Yeah, that sounds about right. From a, from a footballing perspective, do you know what? We played some good football when we played at Red Bull Arena, some really good football, especially against Tigres in the uh, Champions League. So yeah. from a from a pitch perspective, hmm. I'm not going to be naive and try and talk up Yankee Stadium pitch. We all know what a shambles that can, can be. Yeah. It's been better in recent times, but okay. yeah, it, yeah. But at the beginning half of the season, um, Yankee Stadium pitch is always terrible because the Yankees are still playing there. <clears throat> but um, yeah. We we need to get that sorted. Yeah, R- pronto. <laughs> well, I think there was something that I saw online recently around one of the guys from the NYC front office, and they were saying that I think it's going to take about four years from when they've chosen a site to build a soccer stadium. Yeah, it's... so there is there there is um, apparently a site chosen. There's. Um, a factory of some form okay. very close to Yankee Stadium, literally one block away. Um, that is kind of been selected. There was some bits leaked uh, a while back um, that showed side of kind of some plans and how the club are trying to buy this factory and help fund relocating it, something along those lines. Right. Um, so it's there. But New York City is apparently infamous for its red tape around building. Yeah. It's kind of a what does New York get from this building kind of situation. So yeah. whereas building a 25,000 seat stadium in, say, Austin might cost 150 million, you're probably looking for 500 million in New York City just because of the red tape and the fact that it's in New York in those five boroughs and from the fans' perspective, that's the most important thing. I think some will say, if we we could probably have a stadium in three years if we built it like in upstate New York, right? But it's New York City. It's not New York State F football yeah. club. It's New York City football club. So it's got to be in those five boroughs. Um, and I think being so close to Yankee Stadium would feel like home. That would feel like where we've been created, where we've started. So. Um, I think some will say, you know what, come on, let's give it another four, five, six years because that's realistically how long it's going to take. Yeah. And then that could be that could be a great location. Fair. And to be honest, the city group, they can afford it. <laughs> yeah, I think well, they can afford it, but you know, to pay back that five hundred million, how many academy products are NYCFC gonna have to produce yeah. that we can sell on? You know, we've already seen Geo Reyna move on from us to Dortmund and Joe Scally recently go to um, Gladbach I want to say I'm sure it's Gladbach um, so we've had two already leave us but probably not made much if anything at all from those guys because right. they barely played for the actual first team Scally made a couple of appearances but Gio Reyna only ever played in academy teams right. um, so you know what yeah there's some prospects there like James Sands Keaton Parks we could probably just about justify as being our own um but you know yeah that's where that's why NYCFC exists of course isn't it we are there as a feeder club for Man City we're there to yeah. try and find some talent and to maybe make some money if they, if we can for the City Football Group and yeah. but, but based on the players we're buying you can see we're just trying to find these hidden gems that are hidden in like the South Americas or Eastern Europe like uh, Matriza you know, has left us now, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to say anything on that a little bit, but yes, I yeah. did notice um, his uh, value on uh, on FIFA Ultimate Team did uh, go a little bit weird on me because yeah. uh, I had Matrita in my uh, my MLS team that I've got on uh, Ultimate <laughs> Team, but as soon as he left, it's always weird because the value just seems to rocket. Yeah, so, people then want to buy the card just in case the, the card then doesn't you know keep getting replaced or whatever and because he's gone to another team that is also on ultimate team so yeah there will be a newer version of his card and the mycfc card will stop getting produced so yeah again yeah it. weirdly i actually uh, got in through today as well for a oh, okay. uh, new team and uh, just bear with me my microphone has decided to fall on me that's always helpful you know what i'm going to do i'm going to take it out i'm going to go on freehold on this one <laughs> why not <laughs> So, yeah, Matrita, I'll edit that bang out. Um, in terms of transfers-wise, you've had 
a couple of transfers going on in this off season. Um, has there been anything else that's happened or is it just been a bit of a quiet one for you guys? Do you know what? It started really quiet and uh, off season and NYCFC aren't two things that particularly ever go very well. Um, they were between 2019 and 2020 when, um, oh my God, his name escapes me. Uh, Oh, my days, our old manager was. <laughs> it wasn't, oh, it wasn't that. Paddy Vieira, was this? No, the one after that. Ooh. Pep Guardiola's old assistant manager. Don Dome Torrent, thank you, brain, for working. <laughs> Just on a slight delay. Um, yeah, when, when Torrent left, uh, mm. there was a huge radio silence from the club. Pretty much the only tweets that came out were ones that MLS made us tweet, like yeah. mlsstore.com discount promos and all that kind of rubbish yeah. um so there was some real negativity at the beginning of 2020 um and especially when dialer's tenure didn't get underway very well i'm sure we'll come go on over 2020 mm-hmm. in more detail but you know what this off season has not been as terrible as that we've made a few signings okay and they're they're where we need attacking players young and a little bit of a mix, a little bit of experience um, with Morales from Dusseldorf. But it, yeah, there's, yeah, there's transfers and that it, we needed that. Yeah. Um, and some pace as well, which up top we were horrific with too many players that don't have massive legs going forward to Heber, get us up the pitch. Or... Isn't he one who doesn't have much legs, Hepper? Is it Heber? Heber, Heber, yeah, Heber, Heber. I'll go with Heber. Mm. He, he'll he get into great places, don't be wrong. Yeah. You know, ask the Red Bulls defence, you know, that cheeky little back heel <laughs> against them. Um, oh, I can see the gif in my head. Um, but uh, Tati's not the fastest for a no. slight player like he is. He's, he's yeah. not rapid. So, um, whereas the guy we've literally signed the last few days, I have to look at my notes to remember his mm. name already. Uh if you're a wrestling fan, great name, Tiago Andrade. Um, oh. So, yeah, gonna gonna enjoy having his name mentioned. I can I can hear the Spanish American <laughs> announcers, you know, um, gonna hear them rolling those R's in there. Oh, but yes. uh, yeah, he he looks he looks really pacey. So yeah, optimistic with with those signings. Good. And is there any particular one that you would pick out as the star signing that you've had so far? So to add confusion, because oh. we, you know, names, well, why, why we've got now, we've now got two Morales spelt differently because that's going to be the only way we're going to tell the difference. Apart from, of course, Maxi is, you know, five foot nothing. <laughs> um, the Morales we've signed from Dusseldorf is American, um, experienced midfield, you know, hopefully he can bring... <sighs> Just I think that experience that we're lacking in the holding role, perhaps, or even attacking. Uh, Maxi's brilliant, but he does ghost some games. Um, I'm not his biggest fan, so um, the new Morales we've signed, I'm optimistic with. I can't imagine Maxi Morales is going to be around much longer. I'm actually surprised he's still here. I thought I thought we I thought he might even retire in, during the off season. Um, right, exactly. I believe. I believe, I believe there was talk of him going back to Argentina to finish his career. So I was kind of shocked that didn't happen, but maybe that will happen uh, over the summer or yeah. perhaps even end of 2021. So, um, yeah, I think um, the American Morales, uh, Morales with an S, he could be the kind of the Alex Ring role where he, you sometimes don't notice how much he brings to the game but he's always there. He's always there to give someone the outlet if they need to just turn back, but yeah. equally you can then drive forward with the ball as well. Not fair. And in terms of outgoings of the off season, is there anyone you think we shouldn't have let him go? Oh, again, a 50, 50 fan kind of thoughts, but Alex ring. I, yeah. I, yeah. At times last season, he was epic. Really, really good. 2018, 2019 wasn't so great. Um, right. I think a lot of fans remember the game I was at in, um, at City Field, the playoff game in, uh, against Toronto. Yeah. When we lost, he was one of the first players to walk off the field. No, no applauding the fans, despite oh, the yeah. fact that, you know, we were home from home, different stadium, we'd lost. You think, 
you know, end of, it was going to be the, literally the last game of the season for us there because we've yeah. lost. So you think go and give the fans some applause, whatnot. Nope. No. Really mm. bitter atmosphere as soon as fans started seeing people like him lead the players off the pitch as the captain. Just, yeah. But mm. in 2020, he was a different player, different class, really led the team. Um and seeing, I'm already seeing clips of what he's been like at Austin, and they've got they've got a good captain there. Yeah. So, your current head coach, Ronnie, was it Dyla? You pronounce it? Dyla. Dyla. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie, Ronnie Raw. Yeah. Um, he said he had a tough start in 2020. Um, mm. How has that been since him coming in? Then after that, and have the fans now taken to him after that uh, slow start? I think people's opinions of him have have gone up we've certainly progressed there was a real negative feeling around mls's back tournament last year and then excuse me the beginning of the restart of regular season whatever you can call 2020 mls yeah um it was a, a mixed bag first month or so some shaky results to say the least um I think everyone thought it was going to be a phenomenal season when our first game of the season away in the Champions League in Costa Rica, putting five goals past the home team. It's like, wow, yeah. welcome, Ronnie. This is going to be epic, you know? And then first regular season game of MLS before MLS is back started, before the pandemic, we have a man sent off in like, what, 120 seconds or whatever it was, you Ooh. know, just, yeah, terrible start away at Columbus, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it took a long while for him to bed in before the players seemed to really gel with him. Yeah. Um, but we got there in the end. And I, I think towards the end of the season, we did finally start to play some good football. Um, I'm not even going to talk about playoffs. I'm sure you might have wanted to mention them. <laughs> but, that might still I get mean, mentioned. That, that fast that was the Orlando game, the refereeing was <laughs> atrocious. Just, I mean, for anyone who's not seen it, if you're if you're a DC, I'm sure every NYCFC fan's seen it, but if you're a DC fan and you haven't seen that farcical penalty shootout, it was so bad, it made Sky Sports news here. That's like the equivalent of like, uh, yes, is it Sports Center in America, the big sports news show? Um, uh, depends on which state you're in. <laughs> Oh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, they're regional broadcasting. But okay, yes. Sky Sports News here. That's the main sports news outlet. Pretty much the only one as well. Yeah. But, um, you know, MLS made that. MLS is never on Sky Sports News because unless you're up at 1am to watch it, like us mad yes. people, yes. Uh, no one pays attention to MLS. Um, but even that penalty shootout made it because of how ridiculous the whole it, situation with their was. keepers and then their outfield and uh i can't I don't even want to remember his name their defender that saved our atrocious penalties mm-hmm. um yeah, yeah but that, uh that was completely farcical that just yeah, hilarious yeah. Yeah. right from a neutral point of view oh i mean even Fantastic. as a mycfc fan i'm watching it going what is this drama you know I, I'm, I'm sure i was watching with my partner and even my partner is who, who you know does the good girlfriend thing and pretends to be interested in, in what i'm watching but even she was you know what yeah. <laughs> what's happening <laughs> I, I think even for quite a few of the diehard football fans out there they'll be like okay i'm now i'm confused what did orlando win because they're running around yeah. like they're celebrating yeah. but yeah, I did the, feel the, sorry the, for you the guys. Orlando fans. Yeah, the Orlando fan of players, sorry, celebrating that that penalty save as if they'd won the match. Made mm. the referee think that it was it. Like, oh, we must have miscounted. Mm. No, no. And then all the NYC, you can see everyone from NYC going like, we we still have a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> it was just absolutely crazy. I just, yeah, it was unreal. And you're right. The fact that that made Sky Sports News. The only times I've ever seen MLS on Sky Sports News is when. Obviously, David Beckham mate, well, introduced his yeah. team and Phil Neville, his best mate, coming head coach, which is still a bit um, strange that how he's managed to get a job. Um, in Most MLS. bizarre. Yeah. Most bizarre thing. Yeah. Yeah. He had a good thing going with England. I think a lot of uh, female or women's team fans were starting to think we need something fresh. So, yeah. not shocked that he left them. I am shocked that his next move was MLS. Yeah, absolutely. That's a different one. 
But then when you look at it and it's David Beckham, then you kind of think, oh, totally. That makes yeah. sense now. Yeah. 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 And then and then Wayne Rooney scoring his amazing goals against Orlando City. Of course, That's the only time I've ever seen it. That that yeah. running back getting the tackle and throwing the ball up. Well, to be honest, Probably any of his goals against them. Orlando, there's that tackle which was un- yeah. Well, he didn't score that, but he set it up. Yeah, of course, yeah. And then, well, you might as well have scored it. Then the, there was that <laughs> free kick um, the Good following middle. season from the corner flag, and then in his own half. And I just uh, that's the one I always love the most is the one that is on off because I remember I was in a restaurant um, the following day after obviously staying up and watching it. And <laughs> I can just hear Dave Johnson, our commentator, just and I was like, hang on. It's lunchtime that's, that's... and I'm hearing Dave Johnson. <laughs> what is going on here? Um, and it just looks over and there's kids watching the highlight reel, and I'm just like that's that's what it's all about is the exposure yep. so yes but for some reason sky spots don't seem to be as keen on mls this season yeah they've only just announced the games haven't they and yeah. there's nowhere near as many as recent times no. um I mean, we're, we're not NYC- even on, are we? no there's not there's no nycfc game on telly over here at all yet for the first few weeks Ouch. um so none in April. So yeah, lots of VPN actions for me. Mm. I've have uh, New York City. Have they announced how they're going to do their broadcasting? Are they streaming it through their websites, or is it you're going to have to uh, get access to it in another manner? So yeah, there there is a there's, our broadcaster is the Yes Network in mm. New York area, um, who have all the Yankees coverage and NYCFC. Um, nearly all of their games are on there by the ones that have been selected for uh, national coverage. Yeah. They have an app that you can watch the games on. Uh, so I would suspect that I can probably manage to wrangle away to watch it through there. Yeah. <laughs> um, just on an offside, um, the guys of it over at DC, they've just announced uh, pretty much in the hours in the run up to this uh, recording that they are, partnered up with NBC Washington um, to stream, well, not to stream, to broadcast the games on there. And they are broadcasting for the first time ever in uh, Spanish language with uh, Moises Linares, um, who is an absolute great guy. Um, follow him on Twitter. Um, always has a good thing to say about the club. So that's awesome. The fact that we're finally doing Spanish, um, Spanish speaking uh, TV show, uh, TV broadcast, because mm. that's never ever happened in our 26 year history so wow. good good okay. for the club on that one and on top of that they're streaming all the games through uh, dcnight.com for free for international viewers not for international just... viewers for the the standard mls radius that they're allowed which is oh like the 75 s- mile 75. from the stadium thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. okay so and then we I think our second game of the season against uh, New England Revolution is on free spots over here in the UK. So that's good. Lucky for some. Lucky for some. Lucky for me. Yes. Yes. But it's still at 1 a.m. in the morning. So I miss the days of us having Lampard and Rhea and Perlo to attract the Mm. the viewings on Sky Sports. Uh, Those days of dwindling. (laughs) Yeah. All the home games for us are like. Uh, eight o'clock local time so it's usually 1 a.m for for a slot and then yeah yeah our game's 1 a.m isn't it yep and then uh and then the san jose earthquakes game that we've got which is our western conference game on the road yeah has now been pushed back to 11 p.m local time 11 p.m local time 11 p.m p.m. dc time yeah yeah so it'll be like 9 p.m it's 4 a.m yeah 4 a.m 4 (laughs) a.m I actually Sorry. with back going now, now that I'm back to work after <laughs> pandemic times I'm almost I, if, if we had something crazy like that I don't actually think I could do it I'd either have to go to bed and get up for it that's what but I'm, I'm not I'm not good at going to bed early and getting up that's that's so. what I'm actually planning on doing for that one it's a well, it's a Sunday morning game so that's not too bad at least yeah yeah, yeah our I game mean, Saturday into Sunday isn't it and I've got the yeah. Sunday off for the F1 so yeah. oh, nice. um I'll be uh, I'll be watching that one on the early hours of Sunday morning for us. Yeah, and just as a side, another side note, um, for those of you who don't know me and Barney, um, 
more personally, we actually both work for the same company, which is uh, yeah. which is kind of a small world, really. Um, you work in retail, which I used to do. Now I'm on a temporary position in head office. I get my, my weekends and my bank holidays and just <laughs> rub that one in, you know. Well, I've just been paid to sit at home for three months. So. Well, yeah, to be fair, you've done that. And I've been working, I've my, just been, yeah. working my butt off in, uh, in my I, new I, role. I would, if I could move to a head office, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Making my ways now, hopefully making some contacts. So, Good. yeah, we'll see. Anyway, back to soccer. Um, no one wants to hear about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we probably should talk about it. Um, so the Dahlia, 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 Dahlia way. What is, what is Dahlia ball? Uh, what is that about? I can't really put a finger on it, you know, because our tactics have varied so much. Okay. We seem to be insistent on attacking down the left wing. Um, even when our left winger became injured, we then moved Alex Ring to become Alex Wing. <laughs> I, I like the play on words. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I liked the ring leader when he was our captain, you know, oh, like the no. ring. I, I liked that. I liked that. that I was a fan I'll of that one. That. Yeah. But Alex Wing, oh, God. Uh, yeah. Uh, tactically, it, it is actually genuinely quite hard to fathom what's going on in some of our games. Um, sometimes you see us hitting long balls. Mm. But other games, I th- the... Some of the goals we scored, particularly against Red Bulls last year, um, some of the play, the intricate passing we were doing was, you could almost see that the players had finally gelled with yeah. him. Now, a lot of the players were there from 2019 and even earlier. Yeah. So you can't say the players hadn't gelled. So it was clearly a tactical thing from yeah. them and Dyler that wasn't working early season. Um, but it, it, that was almost the pinnacle was that uh, five, Two, five, one. I've forgotten the scoreline um, against Red Bulls at Yankee Stadium. I mean, our fans must have been gutted to not have been there for that game yeah. because that's the win we needed to kind of forget a certain scoreline from earlier <laughs> club history. I'm not even going to mention it. Um, but uh, yeah, Tatty on the day was phenomenal. So many players, you know, really shone that day and it seemed to be that like I say the tactics finally set it set in the right way mm. um, and the passing around the ball playing players in behind some of the wing play and then cutting the ball back was was kind of kind of Man City-esque this season oh, you know oh. the amount of times you see your Phil Foden Bernardo Silva not Bernardo Silva because uh, he's barely played this in comparison yeah. to previous years um uh, Gundogan, is that his Gundogan. name? Gundogan. Gundogan, thank you. You know, going down to the byline and then p- cutting the ball back to, you know, someone like a Jesus or Sterling waiting for it. You know, yeah. that was looking great for us, but it doesn't ha- it hasn't happened often enough. But we've got to be realistic, you know, some of these players, they're not Premier League level. So we've got to be realistic about what we can expect game to game. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm hopeful that, the, you know, we've, we've looked okay in pre-season so far. Um, so hopefully some of the passing uh, that we've seen in those games is, is a way of, and a hint of what we're going to see in 2021. Yeah. Let, let's just talk about pre-season then. Um, because we played each other. Um, yep. Two weeks ago now. I want to say, is it two weeks ago? It's what it, thanks to the pandemic, it feels both like two days ago and two months ago. So, yeah. yeah I think I it's, no just, well, by the time this this episode goes out, it'll be near enough two weeks ago. But in real life, it was just over a week and a half ago. Because, you know, we're recording this on a Monday. This will go out on a Friday. Fair. So, um, <laughs> so that game was at a neutral venue in Philadelphia, of all places. Don't know why. There you go. Yeah, why not? Um, when in Rome, and that you, we both managed to actually tune into the game. It was a bit bizarre because it was a bit windy, wasn't it? Weird surroundings, weird surroundings. So we were on like yeah. a training pitch next to their stadium. I mean, I couldn't help but think, why haven't we just played this in the stadium? Yeah, because it was, it was, it's so exposed because it's next to what I assume is the. The river going into Philly, it, you know, it looks enormous. 
Um, And yeah, so exposed to the elements and that pitch, you can see, obviously the the salty air has destroyed that pitch over the winter or whatever, because it it was just sand. It was gra- it was sand that had some grass in it as opposed to the other way of ground or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, su- surprised that some of the football that did happen in that game was able to, <laughs> as I sort of touched upon. You know, I was actually impressed. That's that was our best preseason game. Yeah. The ones we've played against MLS teams. Yeah. I think um, it, some of the passing around looked decent. We really dominated the first half an hour or so. We really kept you guys deep. Um, which, you know, that's not that we didn't see a lot of that last year from us. Even right. games we did win didn't seem to be that confident unless it was against your Cincinnati's with all due respect to Cincinnati. Mm. Um, so, yeah, uh, optimistic based on that okay. performance. Yeah, yeah, because for me, it was it was a strange game. I don't think we were going to really get any good feedback from it because of the conditions. But um I felt like for us in the opening, opening five ten minutes, we pressed high, um, which is the kind of thing that we're expected to see under Lasada Ball. Um, but you're right; there was there was times you guys dominated, and then there was a bit of time that we were dominating. Then the second half rolled around, and we brought all our trialists on, and then that was <laughs> it. But there was one key talking point in that game, and I think that was on the stroke of half time. And nobody knew what the heck was going on. And for those of you, who, yeah, sorry, <laughs> who, for those of you who haven't been able to tune in to the game or seen any of the highlights or what saw any Twitter feeds from that game, somehow there was two players sent off. I don't know what the heck happened. I mean, we know what happened. Um, I think it was is it Tati Castellanos? For me, overreacted quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hispanic little bit of flair and yeah. reaction to a friendly gesture, hand of, come on, man, barely touched just, you, get just, up. Just get up. You know, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then somehow he got, he got a straight red. Our yeah. guy, Junior Moreno, got his second yellow card. Right, so it wasn't a straight red. Then it wasn't a does. straight red one, that one. Right, um, okay. I found that out afterwards because... Um, yeah, it was apparently he got booked earlier on in the game. I don't remember seeing that, but it was picked up on. And yeah, um, the tackle wasn't on Taddy, wasn't exactly. Wasn't awful. No. Firm no. At, at best or worst, whichever you want to put it. Yeah. Yeah, I think just it was a prime example of MLS gone at MLS. Yeah. Um, you know, they've got to practice their craziness even in preseason, clearly. Oh, absolutely. Um, the refereeing shocking for a preseason game. You know, it's a friendly. Yeah. If they if they if they've been idiots, if they've had a little altercation, just stand back, let let it be, and then just talk to them afterwards and go, guys, come on, it's a friendly. Yes, just not a scrimmage. Chill. No, I'm like, I don't want to say that word. <laughs> not a scrimmage. I can, hand, it's I, a friendly. I can handle soccer, but scrimmage. Is still, what is that word? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, just the refereeing. I just thought that, that it was it was almost amateur. It was like he yeah. just felt like he needed to impose himself on the game. Yeah. But again, it's a friendly. It doesn't matter. No. Just let it let it go. Um, the fact that hearing your guys is a second yellow card, even even that makes me think, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, and again, is this? I've never heard of this. A friendly. Someone gets sent off, but it's okay. You can replace them. Is that well, a thing? Well, th- this I've is never what... heard of that being a thing. No. So generally speaking, as we all know, you get sent off. You can't replace them unless you're playing six aside that I used to. And <laughs> somehow we had someone sent off on the other team, and then they brought us up, and we're like, "Hang what? on, what?" Yeah, and like, and like some soccer. Yeah, like I've done five aside yeah. leagues, and you get sin bins. Tends to be a sin, thing sin bins like, fine, but it was an yeah. actual red card because I got headbutted. <laughs> somehow, someone managed to headbutt me. I know, I know what you're thinking. I'm I'm six foot ten, and somehow I managed get headbutted but you know that's neither here nor there he jumped up quite high um <laughs> but i think this is just down to both head coaches saying look let's it's, it's a friendly let's just play 11 aside yeah so yeah. i think there was agreement in place that both teams would 
bring it bring back on an extra player. I think we brought brought on Griffin Yao. I think it was. I might be wrong on that. Might be Moses Nyman. One of our youngsters alongside seventy thousand trialists that we seem to have been playing recently. <laughs> Honestly, I've lost count, and that's one thing I've. And I've noticed this again across MLS as a whole is the fact that they'll go in the lineup. You've got Chris Seitz in goal, Brendan Hines, like trialist number 67. They're like, what? Just just tell us who it is. Yeah. And then no, to be fair, I, I, you do, I, I've seen that a few times over here as well, though. Um, yeah. you, especially in the first preseason game or two, you'll see trialist. Yeah. And it's often like a, a relatively young player that's been released by another academy or something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen that happen. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we had many. Um, if, I don't think you had any. I'm I'm aware. No, no, I think pretty much everyone we played was was on the books already. A couple yeah. of academy, there was three or four academy players that were part of our Florida preseason games. Um, but by the time we got round to the DC game and then Hartford uh, the other day, mm. we um, we had extra players in the ranks a few players back from injuries and things so yeah, yeah. that's fair because I know you when we were chatting during the game and you were asking about obviously the players that we had on the pitch and obviously did we have anyone out I know we had so many players out on that one Bill Hamid's out injured at the moment Steve Birnbaum's out injured um, we didn't have Eric Sorger in that game because he was away on international duty Nigel Roberta um, was quarantining because he just arrived in the USA from his um, transfer from Bulgaria. <laughs> and there was a few other players that have just been out injured. And it's just, our preseason has been a bit interrupted to say the least. Um, and we've ended up with a record of one win, two tar- or if we've got an American format, one win, two losses and two ties. Why is that way around either? So if someone out there, if you could let me know why it is wins, <sighs> losses, ties rather than wins, ties, losses, and I'm saying ties because it's American rather than draws, like we say over here in the UK. Um, I'd I'd love to know that because it's it, it's all it's never been it's never bugged me too much, but it's one of those odd things because I look at the table and I think. I'm sure we didn't. We haven't I drawn that many games. And then, sports, yeah. yeah. A lot of American sports, they don't have ties, do they? They go to extra time, overtime. even in regular games. Yeah, overtime. Over, Sorry, overtime, yeah. overtime. Yes. overtime. Uh, so maybe it was a fact that, you know, wins and losses were like a predetermined thing in their heads of what the order is, and they've had to yeah. add on ties onto the end or something. Yeah, no, but maybe. Um, it's, it's another thing I love about uh, watching... Uh, soccer is the fact that the games always kick off late. Yep, they because never, of... never kick off 11, but it, it'll actually kick off at 11.06 because they need to have six minutes of pre game time because the show starts at 11. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> another thing that's always got me. But I asked um, our good friend uh, Dave Johnson, who's been on the show a few times now, why is that? And he mentioned, well, one, TV, but two, yeah. fans are never usually in the stadium on time. I noticed that I noticed that more uh, on in my second game in MLS, yeah. which was actually in Orlando, uh, Orlando City against Atlanta, mm. and yeah, I noticed that big time in Orlando that I was in the I was in the uh, the wall as they yeah. call it, yeah, um, trying to just soak in a bit of their atmosphere, see what it was like. Very impressed, yeah, um, and yeah, good. 10, 20 minutes, there's still people streaming in, especially to the other stands. I noticed, you know, perhaps the more casual fans and yes. whatever, the the, the, the uh, really loyal, noisy fans of the wall, they were there early to get their space and get their place in the favourite bit of their wall or whatever. But um, yeah, definitely a thing that people weren't so keen on having to get in there half an hour before for whatever yeah, it's 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 one of the things over here. Um, you'll go for your pre-match drink at the pub, 100%. generally speaking, yeah, and then you'll make your way down to the stadium to have your pre-match yeah. drink at the stadium. Hundred percent. Yep. yep. <laughs> then you'll have your pre-match kickoff drink at the stadium. Then you go into the stands because you can't take a drink in the stands. <sighs> Then you go down a, five minutes before half time to get your drink because you're gonna to have to wait in the queue. 
get your pie. Get your, get your pie. <laughs> Maybe it's your bovril. Because, you know, it depends on where you are in the country. Northern boys love gravy in a, in, in a, in a flask, you know, why not? And then <laughs> you get to you get to full time and then you go down for a, a post game drink. I think we yes. like drink is the outcome on that yes. one. Yes. Um, but again, with MLS, the one thing I love about going to MLS games, I don't know whether it's the same across, across the nation, but it certainly is at Audi Field. Taking a beer in the stands is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I must Brand- admit that was I was I was uh, I didn't I didn't actually know it was a thing. I didn't know you were allowed until my first game out there. I just I hadn't picked up on that that you could drink yeah. in the stands. I knew you can over here when it's not football. So like if you go to rugby like Twickenham, yeah. you can drink in the stands there. But uh, I just assumed it was like a football thing, perhaps. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, have it at Yankee Stadium with the kind of the twenty ounce cans of Bud, White, Bud Light, um, oh. which are just enormous and and it also extortionately expensive, something like sixteen dollars a can. <laughs> um, and then I, I seem to remember having a twenty ounce can of Heineken as well at City Field, which uh, I think I I think I'd bought a good chunk of the drinks in the lead up to the city field game and then said yeah. to my partner well probably under the influence like oh, this, is, this is one's on you and then it's probably the most expensive drink of the day like 20 dollars a can or something it was, yeah i remember it being crazy money but uh yeah. i suppose that's the premium of having getting to drink it in the in the, in in the, the stands, stands whatever yeah. yeah i remember uh when i first went to audi fields um it wasn't in the support section but it was um and the opposite end um just above the dugout Oh, not the dugout, the um, to the tunnel to the uh, locker room, and went down, got myself a drink, looked at it. I was like, okay, what's what? It's like, okay, Heineken, it's probably the best one out of the lot. Looked at the price; it was a pint, and I was like, uh, fifteen dollars. Right, okay, <laughs> I can get this in the UK yeah. for about two pounds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If I have a pint of Pompey Lager at, at Fratton Park, I think oh. it's it's about three pound fifty, and it's like it's like Green King Lager. Some, you I know, mean, that's that could be worse. It's, could be it, worse. I've had worse. I've had worse, definitely. Yeah. But, uh, yes. yeah, I mean, the three pounds is you, you you'll take three pounds over that fifteen dollar yeah extortion at the price ticket. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I uh, openly admit it's on the last on well. I was on a podcast at the weekend, the Tried and True DCU podcast, um, which uh, has just recently gone out and went out live as well. Uh, that I've actually been to more Major League Soccer games in the last decade than I have over here in the UK. Wow. Yeah, no, I can't tell you that, as you, you probably know. I am uh, yeah, you, you a bit are. of a ground hopper. I, I, I like going to as many grounds as I can, non-league, yep. football league. Um, yeah, I've ticked off a fair few in the last 24 months, even in spite of the pandemic. Yeah. Naturally, can't couldn't get to many Pompey games last year. I was very naughty and snuck into the uh, the home end of Cheltenham versus Pompey in the did. Tim Pot Trophy Cup here. Yes, um, just had to kind of not wear a Pompey shirt for one game and be quiet when we scored. But uh, uh, that was a new ground to tick off. Um, and there was from when we looked on the ground top of stats afterwards on Footballogy, there was about five Pompey fans that had done the same thing that had bothered to check in. <laughs> I'm sure there was probably more. I'm sure there was, but uh, probably. yeah, I, uh, I'm a, a football addict. I can't not go to the football over here. I'm too yeah. obsessed with it. Yeah, to me, it's just it's it is an expensive thing to do. But then I, I I'd spend a flight and a ticket out there just to go and watch them last games. I've done that twice. I would have done it last year, but pandemic. Yeah, I'm, same. Would, yeah, want to do it this year. That depends on what whether the government will allow us to do um, to do it or not. I got my so, flights booked. I'm going. You got your flight booked. Yeah, you've you've been uh, risky on that one. So we'll I'm see whether taking it's in... a pun. I've got I've got the last game of the season as yeah. far away as we can. November. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see whether it's in green, amber, or red, because you know we love our color coding system over here in the UK. Yeah. I'm not, if it's green, I'm booking a flight. <laughs> if it's amber depends on how much annual leave I've got left <laughs> and if it's red I am paying oh, yeah. 1,750 yeah. quid 
to stay in a hotel yeah. that you can't choose. Don't think I'll just reg- reg- register yourself as an elite athlete, and then somehow you don't have to because that yeah. means you're you, you're you know immune to COVID or, or media <laughs> or media press. sometimes as well. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll go over as press. That could work. Why not? I could get, I could get press credentials. Hopefully, you never know. <laughs> That's anyway. Anyway, so back to New York City or New New Jersey City FC. Sorry, had to Three, that one in there. Um, <laughs> Your preseason overall, because all I know is obviously the game between us. How has it actually gone? Has it been a good preseason? Have you taken any light on to what this your 2021 is going to be like from it? I think, yeah, like we sort of touched upon in a, in a small way, I think we look more settled. Um, our preseason last year was more or less the Champions League, was our games against uh, the Costa Rican team. Whose name has now long gone from my memory? Um, is it Cypress? So, no. Or was it some? <laughs> oh, actually, was it Alahawawanzi? No. No. I've, no, I've, I've no, probably no. absolutely messed I, that pronunciation up. So, apologies. yeah, I, I, I'm not. I, it also confuses me because we didn't even play in their ground. We played in a different stadium. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. If, well, so they're clearly they appreciate the problems of playing mm. at home, same yes. as us. So. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, our preseason last year was was mostly Champions League games, and then mm. we kind of went into our standard preseason games, not looking overly strong. Um, this year, much more confident. I, I'm always really hesitant to take anything from preseason games because yeah. you just know that so many different systems are played. Some managers intentionally tell the players not to play bad, but to kind of let your let yourselves get into trouble. Yeah. Play out the back a lot, see how much you can take on, yeah. put yourselves under pressure so that you get that practice of having the pressure put onto you um, from a team, like you say, like, I mean, the DC press, is probably the perfect kind of thing that we need to get back to because we do tend to play out from the back. Yeah. We don't play long. So we do need to practice that getting pressed by a team like um, Masada's way of get playing. So um, I, I feel like on the whole, we did well enough. We scored a really good goal. Um, I was trying, I thought it was against DC in my head, but it, I don't it, no, it was against DC. Your the goal um, where Tararenson squared it back across for Tati. I yeah. was really impressed by that. Um, Tararenson looks like he's been getting forward a lot more than he did last year. Um, so it, uh, we tend do tend to play wing backs. Okay. We had um, oh my days. What is me with names? Day Anton Tinnerholm and Matarita, um, mm. who's now left. Matarita's left us and gone to Cincinnati. But uh, Matarita really gets forward. Um, so Tarantinson seems to have filled his gap and much better than last season because Tarantinson last year didn't get forward. So when he was filling any um, gaps from Matarita doing, like, say, international duty or something, um, we didn't look anywhere near as strong on the left side. Whereas yeah. pre season, particularly against you guys, he looked really good. So yeah, yeah. I'm optimistic. I'm not Fair. certainly not you know, worried per se. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go on to the opening game of the season. I'm going to ask for your predictions now. How do you think it'll go? I think we'll be better than, I think, yeah, I think we'll be better than last year. Um, last year felt like a disappointment because we, in 2019, we won the Eastern Conference. So I think a lot of fans thought, well, unless we do that again, it's going to feel like a backward step. Yeah. We're going to need to either get much further in the postseason playoffs or at least, I don't know, an open cup run or something. I don't know. Um, nevertheless, this back didn't even work for us. You know, mm. we just about scraped through the group stage from rightly and then got knocked out. So, um, yeah, I, I think we finished fifth in the East last year. So maybe like a third. I, I, would, I, don't, I don't think we're going to go first. I can't see us getting first. Yeah. Um, I think Philly still look really strong. Um, yeah. I think they, they looked really good against us in our first game. Um, so, yeah, I think I think 
second or third, I would I would accept that. But I oh, think what we really where we really need to move forward is playoffs. We've yeah. never done well. We get absolutely smashed every time. Um, not absolutely smashed, but we don't look good. Yeah. Um, we just seems to be our our bogey at the moment that we get there and just fall apart. So yeah, uh, yeah. I'd like I'd like a, a longer run, maybe at least a playoff uh, championship final, uh, conference final. Sorry, um, that would be my goal. Whether it's realistic, wait, wait and see. But uh, my optimistic person thinks conference final would be a huge step forward for the club. So yeah. let's make that my prediction. Fair. I'm. Um, I know how you feel about playoffs because you know historically, recently we've never got past the first round. So that was under <laughs> the Ben Olsen era, but now it is the Un- Unan Lasada era. So that's always going to be good. And I think I'm cautiously optimistic for the opening game of the season against you guys because it's a new way of playing and we've not had the settled side. We've used trialists throughout the throughout preseason. So it's been kind of, I'd see who's where, but um, Lasada's come out and said that a lot of the players still aren't fit enough right now. They're good for 65, yeah. 70 minutes. But after that, that's when we start struggling. But... MLS recently announced that there's going to be five subs still, um, okay. which is good. Um, for us, that's that's a great thing. They're still doing the three opportunities, but if you sub at halftime, that doesn't count as one of your opportunities, so you do get that yep. option there. And they're taking on the uh, concussion um, substitution oh, as well. Yeah. So apparently there is a limit on that, though, for us, which I thought was a bit odd. So The limit on concussion subs? Yeah. I mean, granted, you yeah, don't want to have too many concussions, but sure, sure, yeah. Um, it's it's one if you've or if you've already made all your subs, it's one, isn't it? And then if you've still got subs left, it's two. Yeah, I believe and then the I, opposing I, yeah, team. Yeah, get, they get an extra sub. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which I think is a bit odd. I'm not sure. I agree with that bit. Based, yeah, I don't, obviously we've got to pay more attention to the, the intricacies of that of that, yeah. but. It, to me, that means that you could potentially end up making like seven subs a game. Yeah, like, that's could, crazy. <laughs> might as well just have a that's full new team out. <laughs> virtually two thirds of your team is being subbed out in a game. Yeah, and I think they're still going. I think it's nine subs as well. So you start. You've yeah. I think that's that. becoming more and more of a thing, isn't it? Yeah, that you yeah. have more of a squad of players to choose from. Yeah. So many clubs now have such depth in their teams. And I think, you know, I was going to say, I think that's something you guys have missed mm. in the past under yeah. your previous manager that you, if you did have any international call ups, any injuries, you seem to really lack depth. Um, last last and I season think, was a big one for us because yeah, we ended same. up having to use our youngsters of uh, Yao, Nyman, and uh, Paredes, which to be fair, they all did lum and good because they have come on leaves and bounds. Um, but the fact that we had to rely on them week in, week out was not good uh, because they just ended up getting burnt out. And Paredes, who's pretty much missed pre-season with us, had, is still recovering from last season. So it just goes to show that we should still have that depth. We've got players who've come in. so And it's just been announced today on the recording on Monday that there should be some um, additional roster activity happening on the next couple of days, according to uh, Stephen Goff. So that's going to be interesting to see mm. what happens in that in the run-up to uh, the, I think it's the Friday's the submission for the roster, final roster for the season. I, think. Pass. I can't say I've paid attention to that. <laughs> yeah, fair. yeah, I think that's the, that's the date where it's either, Friday, it's either Thursday or Friday. Um, so I'd expect to see a lot of transfer activity. And obviously, by the time the show goes out, we'll know what's happened anyway. So this is out of date already. <laughs> Go figure. Um, can I get a scoreline prediction for Saturday? Stroke Sunday. Oh, so yeah, I mean, I, I always remember that generally NYCFC have a good record against you guys. So I'm going to go that we're going to keep our unbeaten run. Okay. Uh, and I think it's going to be, I don't, I don't think it's going to be comfortable for us, but I think it'll be like a 2 1 NYCFC. 
Um, I see us looking confident. I, I see, you know, the new yeah. signings, I think, might give the players a boost. Yeah. You know, you get some players who see new signings and they think, oh, well, that's competition for my place. Yeah. I'm worried or negativity. But I, I see these guys re- understanding that you need depth nowadays, um, especially with the amount of travel the MLS players have to go through. So, yeah. yeah. I think uh, I think it's going to give us a boost that we've got some attacking options finally, yeah. uh, especially while Heber is still out injured. So yeah, two one NYCFC. I'm going. Okay, so my prediction is I think it will be a draw. I don't think we'll get beat. Um, it's not going to be nil nil because Lasada's never had a match where it's been a nil nil draw. <laughs> there, there, there's a little fact for you, Barney. Um, he's had a five five draw. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we we actually spoke about, me and I've spoke about that on um, the episode that I heard him on. And it, the goals were just going up and down. It was it was like 3-1 and it went to 3-3 and then it went to 5-3 the other way and then it brought back. And it's wow, just... It, the average amount of goals he sees in a game is three. Okay. So your 2-1 could be right, but I'm going to go for a 2-2 tie. Interesting. A bit of entertainment. Yeah. There will be plenty of bookings because there's always Standard. plenty of bookers in our in, uh, between us. Yeah. Um, there is always a little bit of feistiness. And now the fact that you, you're trampling on New Jersey Metro Stars toes and playing in their ground, you might as well just merge into <laughs> one team. So we might as well have that rivalry. Uh, you're meant to be with us and, and not like the, the energy <laughs> well, drink football team. So oh, we, we, we still don't like them. So we've got that. <laughs> we've got that in common. So um, there we go. That is that is pretty much the end of the episode. So um, Barney, uh, where can people find you? Because people should follow you. I know you're a rival team, but yeah, MLS UK, and we all support each other. Yeah, MLS UK community is getting stronger and stronger. A few new fans have joined, like uh, Austin FC UK dude has really uh, got on board with the the Verdi. Uh, yes, I am at UK and my CFC. Um, Soon to potentially go through a little bit of a rebranding around that, but I'll keep the original handle and I'm on both on Twitter and Instagram. There we go. Um, so again, thank you very much for coming on to today's show. And as always, if you're not following me on any of the socials, how the heck did you find this show? But <laughs> if you need to know it on Twitter, it's at DC United Kingdom, Facebook and Instagram, it's at DC United Kingdom FC. And if you want some match that looks kind of like this, but you might notice now the logo has dropped the stars and the legal looks same outline it's just lost the innards um head over to the link in the description below um and you'll see some lovely lovely merchandise over there um and well let's kick off the season let's have a great 2021 let's have a lot of hashtag lasada ball going <laughs> and until next time vamos united <laughs>